The Final Fantasy XIV North America 2016 Fan Fest started off as expected with a dramatic introduction to the new upcoming 4.0 expansion, Stormblood. Whilst the trailer that we discussed in the previous video outshone pretty much everything else that happened over the two days in Vegas, Naoki Yoshida's opening keynote address consolidated some details, artwork and features of Stormblood in its current state of development. Now the keynote address did require a stream pass for those of you at home, and those of us present were not permitted to film the address. So you will have to forgive me that many of the following images are taken from my mobile phone, uh, but they still serve to demonstrate everything that we know of 4.0 thus far, the most significant and titillating details of which I would like to discuss today. Firstly, we had long expected this expansion to be concerned with the liberation of Alamigo and the Warrior of Light's alliance with the Alamegan resistance towards this end. What we didn't know is that in Gaius van Belsar's absence, a new Imperial Viceroy already rules over occupied Girabanya, Legatus Zenos Ye Galvus, commander of the 12th Imperial Legion. If the family name didn't make it obvious enough, the title Ye denotes this man as of the direct royal line of Solus Zos Galvus and subsequently either a brother or cousin of the current Emperor Varus. We should not doubt that the consequences of this change in administration will be dire. Gaius van Belsar was so far quite unique among the Garleans in his desire to see Eorzea not burned and decimated but saved. He was at odd ends with the officially sanctioned Meteor Project of Nail Vandanus, and we have no reason not to believe that this Xenos Ye Galvus will similarly escalate the conflict against the besieged Eorzeans. Given that the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are currently seeing a resurgent concern regarding possible summonings of Rauga by members of the Alamegan Resistance, it is hard to imagine that Xenos will not have heard the self-same rumors given that even the potential for primal summoning has been sufficient for Garlemald to attempt genocide against each of the beast races, a bloodthirsty new Legatus could easily use this information to justify measures even as extreme as Meteor to simply wipe us from the map. Make no mistake, the appearance of this new antagonist will represent an escalation in Imperial aggression, one sufficient enough to force the hand of the Scions and hopefully even that of the Eorzean Alliance. Speaking of this escalation, it seems that Girabanya has been seeing some fresh combats not at all far from well-established Garlean positions. This appears to depict the Veladina River, splitting Girabanya from the eastern approaches of the Twelveswood. The eponymous Baelsar's Wall separates the region from the rest of Eorzea, and the tree line quickly gives way to desolate canyons. Although I would very much like this to be the West Shroud, it is far more likely to be the long-contested Eastern Front, site of the Autumn War and countless skirmishes between Garlemald and the Resistance. Back in Girabanya, we have closer shots of the far side of the bridge hanging across the Veladina, this apparently ruined temple to Rauga, and some ground-level features of Rauga's reach, including a small village of tents and a conspicuously Charlayan etherite. As I mentioned, these janky shots were all taken from my mobile phone, and so I apologize if they seem at all torturous. There will of course be a number of new areas aside from Girabanya, and Yoshida confirms that each of these areas will be fully accessible by flying mounts just as soon as you've completed your ether current attunements. Once again, 4.0 will contain the same level of scope and content as Heaven's Ward, equivalent to a full release RPG, but I also have it on good authority that the budget for this expansion is a magnitude higher, which can only be good. We will see many new primals in a combo of nostalgic and original, new dungeons, new eight-man and alliance raids, but Yoshida also implied that Bloodstorm's endgame raids will have not two, but likely three difficulty tiers, and that the savage raids may well even cover an entirely different storyline to that of the normal and hard modes. We have an expanded exploration feature, Eureka, for which I'm sure many of you have particular expectations, but we were reassured that it will be quite different to the diadem, uh, it will be important to the new relic grind, and may even include features such as a certain 72-hour notorious monster timer. New gear is expected, but it will be accompanied by an extreme increase in inventory capacity. 
We saw some concept art for what is certainly the new Bard, White Mage and Black Mage AF gear, and a staff mounted with something that conspicuously resembles a dragon's eye. A fourth housing area will be available with the launch of 4.0, although we know not where it will be situated. Other than that, it has some significance to the main scenario. And finally, we have some more fundamental features, such as a UI revamp, which will allow us to peel our eyes off our chub timer from time to time, a reassessment of cross-class skills to be grouped by role rather than by individual job, and a trimming of useless skills and possible streamlining of rotations to make room for the influx of new skills and traits coming with the increased level cap from 60 to 70. The game will see an update in the minimum spec requirement for Windows and as expected from this, PS3 support will discontinue the moment 4.0 launches, but there will be a number of free upgrade campaigns offered in the interim. In his honored tradition of shirt reveals, Yoshida gave us as good as a confirmation for Red Mage, so it seems that our intuitions about Alize and Ilbert were correct, and although he told us that there will be multiple new jobs introduced in 4.0, he said nothing else of what or how many they could be. Anyway, that is the short and brief of the FanFest keynote, one which raises infinitely more questions than it answers, but Yoshida tells us that we will have to look forward to the EU and JP festivals for more new details and elaboration on the features of 4.0 Bloodstorm. I hope this video has made you feel a little more up to speed. I apologize again for the quality of some of these shots, but it was really the best I could do with what I had available. I would like to talk in the next couple of days about the Vegas Law Panel with Koji Fox and perhaps in general terms about the Encyclopedia Eorzea. So go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But for now, leave your comments below, share with your friends. I'm Ethis. And thanks for watching.